Hello, the story I have to read you today is called Circle of Thanks. It is by Susie Gregg Fowler and Peter Catalonato. This is a story about a boy who lives in a very, very cold place called the Tundra, like where Alaska or Northern Canada is. There is no color on the Tundra in winter, no color and no sound except the howling of wind and wolves. Arctic Fox wears his winter white coat. No one can see him. He blends so perfectly into the miles and miles of snow. But the boy and his mama see the tracks on the snowy path around their cabin. They smile. It is good to know they're not alone. You see those tracks? Circle of thanks. Spring finally comes. Grasses poke through the wet snow and shiver into the cool air. The heavy rain turns white to brown. The ground is squishy and wet as the boy and his mama hurry to the river. Slurp, slurp go the boy's boots as the wet tundra tries to suck them in. River otters' pups are sure to be out of the den. Hers are the first youngsters every spring, and the boy is eager to greet them. <clears throat> so look, <clears throat> spring is coming, and all the snow is melting, and the ground is getting muddy. Hello, pup, he says to a small bond creature sliding along on the riverbank. Where's your mother? She'll be back soon, Mama says. After all, otter pup doesn't know how to swim yet. Suddenly, there's a splash. Otter pup tumbles into deep water, and she cannot get out. Mama strides into the icy river, grabs Otter Pup like a wet kitten, and deposits her on the bank. There now, you wait for your mother before you go swimming again. Otter Pup blinks, then turns and runs toward home. She doesn't say thank you, but Mama doesn't mind. What can you expect from an Otter Pup? Look, she saved the baby Otter, the Mama. In just a few weeks, the tundra changes completely. There is color all across the land. Green clumps of willows and berry bushes and bright patches of buttercups and marsh marigolds are everywhere. Swans, geese, and sandhill cranes nest in the wet grasses. Otter Pup is a skilled swimmer now and a good fisher too. One day she climbs up the riverbank, dragging a grayling fish. Raven watches closely from behind some willow brush. For once he is silent. His wing is injured, and he doesn't want his enemies to see it. Raven holds perfectly still, but she cannot hide from Otter Pup. She spots him and his injured wing. Raven looks with longing at Otter Pup's fish. Suddenly, Otter Pup drops her fish. Raven hops forward and snatches it, never taking his eyes off of Otter Pup. He hides behind the willows again and gobbles up the fish before anyone can take it from him. He doesn't say thank you, but Otter Pup doesn't mind. What can you expect from a raven? So look, the mama saved the otter, and now the otter is helping the raven. What do you think the raven will do? In time, raven heals. He flies over the tundra, snatching berries, stealing fish from other animals, and making noise wherever he goes. One morning, raven sees something near a clump of dwarf birch and swoops down for a better look. It's a lost caribou calf separated from her mother's. Raven sits on a branch and watches the long-legged creature. Caribou calf stares back with big, frightened eyes. Croak! Raven squawks and squawks again. Other ravens respond to his scratchy call. They hover above caribou calf like a noisy black cloud. Mother caribou notices the gathering of ravens and comes pounding over the tundra. Together again, Caribou Calf and her mother glance up at the raven circling above them. They don't say thank you, but Raven doesn't mind. What can you expect from Caribou? A caribou is very big, almost like a moose or like a reindeer. Mother Caribou and her calf rejoin the herd, heading down toward the coast to escape the mosquito and flies. The sun never goes down. It is high summer, the time of light. And then change comes again. 
The sun sets for the first time in weeks. Autumn is not far off. Some of the waterfowl begin their migration south. The caribou, too, are on the move again. Mother caribou hears a whimper. She heads toward the sound, leaving the herd. It is an arctic fox caught in a trap. He is a sad sight, scruffy and exhausted from trying to escape. His mottled fur is still changing from summer brown to white. When he sees mother caribou, arctic fox is afraid. Caribou's big hooves and strong legs could make short work of him. But mother caribou's hoof lands in the steel's trap and springs it open. Then she moves on. Arctic fox is free. He doesn't say thank you, but mother caribou doesn't mind. What can you expect from an arctic fox? Day after day, Arctic Fox nurses his paw until it is healed. His coat is completely white again, and winter is almost here. The boy has been watching the sky. Mama tells him the snow will come soon. If he wants enough berries to last until spring, he'd better go picking one final time. There aren't many berries left, and it takes a long time to fill up both buckets. The boy's hands are cold, and he is glad to finish up and put his mittens back on. He better hurry home for supper. He's picking those berries. But as the boy turns to go, his ankle twists under him. Ouch! He cries and tumbles down. His precious berries scatter. He crawls around, picking up all he can. And when he tries to stand, he collapses. He cannot walk. Mama, the boy calls, but Mama cannot hear him. He begins to crawl toward home. The light is disappearing quickly and the cold stings his cheeks. Oh, he hurt himself. He can't walk. What will he do? Soft as feathers, snow begins to fall. The boy takes a deep breath and crawls some more. He stops and takes off a mitten in order to eat a few berries and then he gasps. He can just make out arctic fox in the deepening twilight. Would an arctic fox hurt a boy alone in the dark? Suddenly, arctic fox darts forward and grabs his mitten. Come back, thief, cries the boy. But arctic fox doesn't come back. Why would he take a mitten? What do you think the fox is going to do? At home, Mama wonders where the boy is. He knows better than to be late for supper. The darkness and the weather worry her. She'd better look for him. Look, there's not a lot of light left in the sky. And look, what do you see there? Mama steps outside. It's his mitten. Where are you, she calls, but no one is there. Then where did the mitten come from? Mama shines a light into the darkness. Tracks in the fallen snow lead up to the mitten and disappear behind the wood pile. They are the tracks of Arctic Fox. Mama cannot see where the tracks begin. Perhaps if she follows them, she will find her son. The wind begins to blow and the snow is falling faster. If Mama doesn't hurry, the snow will cover the delicate prince. Look, you see the mitten, and here's the fox tracks. Mama never notices arctic fox gliding like a shadow in the falling snow, but he trails behind her, silent and unseen. Not until Mama finds the boy and lifts him into her arms does arctic fox disappear into the night. On the way home, Mama tells the boy about the appearance of his mitten and the tracks that led her to him. And the boy remembers Arctic Fox. Thank you, he whispers into the night air. Look, she found him and she's carrying him home. And look, there's Arctic Fox. His words are carried on the wind. They float past Arctic Fox as he hurries home. They circle around Mother Caribou, asleep with her calf. They sail over Raven, hunched on a bare willow branch. They slip into a den in the frozen river and whisper to Otter Pup. I'm 
remember how they, all those animals helped one another? And they come back to where they began, back to the boy and back to his mama, back to the cabin all cozy and warm. The boy and his mama smile at each other. It is good to know that they are not alone. I love that story because you can see how just one person helping the otter pup and the otter pup helped something, some other animal and it kept going until finally the fox was able to help the little boy. And you can do that too. You can help one person and they might feel like they want to help someone else. And then a lot of people will be happy. I liked reading this story to you. I'll see you later.